Uh, we are here at Socito getting back into doing live video again. Yeah. And uh, it's, been, it's been a little bit of a while, what, maybe five, six months since we've done a live video last. Uh, we tried one last Friday, which had some blunders, and we'll get into, uh, into why that was, and hopefully some of you won't see the same blunder. Um, but we're back into it. We're back into using live video. We've just noticed that it's so hyper-optimized on social media that if you're in marketing, if you're in B2B, if you want exposure for yourself, uh, you should be using live video. Uh, so why, why did we go away from using live video again? What was the reason for that? Well, it's really tough to measure, and, and you got to understand that like we're super data-driven here, right? We love our metrics, me especially, total data marketing nerd, right? Uh, my favorite book is Data Driven Marketing, uh, but you know, we, we got to this point where we just we couldn't attribute, hey, were people watching videos? Were they actually coming to our website? Were they actually filling out the forms? Were they actually turning into leads um, just from a, a video view? And, and so we, you know, we said, hey, oh, this obviously isn't making a huge impact on our funnel because of that. Uh, so we stopped doing it, right? And not just video, we actually turned off almost every channel we couldn't measure directly into revenue. And we said, oh, this is fine for a while. Um, but then our traffic plummeted by like 50%. And, oh, gee, I wonder why. Yeah. You know? yeah. So and we couldn't see the direct attribution, right? And so as we've been you know, really looking at costs, I mean, this is something that all marketers do, right? Is go down the budget line item by line item and say what's working and what's not working. Uh, we didn't see that live video was working for us. But what we didn't realize is that it was more correlative, and as soon as we stopped doing live video, traffic started to plummet. Um, we saw that we just got less direct traffic, less search traffic. So now we're kind of back in the mindset of measuring social media engagement as a whole, and what we're seeing is that live video is one of the highest engaging pieces of content out there. And it doesn't have to be difficult, right? We, we can riff, we can create a new video, provide valuable content. Um, it takes much less time than a webinar or an ebook. Uh, and so this is something that we wanted to get back to, but then we want all of our followers to th be thinking about and all of you in the audience to be thinking about how you can use live video to really nurture and engage your audience. Yeah, and we're just seeing it so much more across the board now. Video itself becoming more important, but really these kind of moments of like authentic marketing, not to use a buzzword here, but the fact that, uh, you know, people want to engage to actual people in the brand. Yeah. So it's less about, you know, employee advocacy, I feel like used to all be about, oh, push the marketing message out. Let's spin up some tweets that people can retweet from our brand. And now it's all about highlighting employees, sure. right? My friend uh, works down at, at Pokemon and kind of their event marketing, field marketing. And she said their highest campaign from this past year was running a Halloween event where the employees were actually the ones um, going out talking about their favorite Pokemon yeah. and running little mini events to have like Interesting. competition, the best Pokemon that we have. And it was just all completely led by the employees. And right. people thought it was so much fun and so funny right. that these employees were super nerds about their own product yeah. that they got into it. And that's kind of what we're seeing more and more. Yeah. And, and frankly, it's nothing new, right? When it comes to B2B marketing, the coveted content slot is a speaker slot, right? We go to events, we spend a bunch of money sponsoring it, we try to get one of our employees to be a speaker and, and kind of share the thought leadership. Um, it costs a ton of money, and live video kind of does the same thing. We put together all these webinars and hope that 100 people, 200 people get on there in a captive audience. Live video does that so immediately. Um, and not only does it provide a form of content, but it also provides the distribution channel. So even just in the live video that we did on Friday, we got 80 live viewers and then another 80 or so to come in and view the on-demand video without any promotion. We didn't promote it because there was no audio on the video, which we'll talk about here in a bit. But uh, just by having live video and putting it out there in the feed on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, you get a captive audience. When you're B2B, it doesn't need to be huge, right? I mean, if you can get the right people viewing your video for 10, 15 minutes as a captive audience, just like you would do in a webinar, that's massively, massively valuable. So think about how you can be doing live video in your own business and, uh, and what it takes. Um, like I said, we did it on Friday. It didn't work well for us. And, and any time that you're doing live video, there will be blunders, right? Think about this the same way as getting up on stage, 
and your PowerPoint slides don't work correctly or something happens. If you're doing it live, you're going to get a lot more engagement, but there's also chances for some blunders. So take them with stride, learn from them. There's a couple tips that we can give you to maybe make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that we did. Um, so the mistake that we made on Friday was that there was no audio to the video, and maybe Adam can tell us a little bit why and how to avoid it on your side if that, uh, if that ends up happening. Yeah, well, I mean, check your apps, people, right? And, and check it all specifically, the machines you're using, what you're doing. This is kind of true for anything in marketing. You should always QA in kind of a real live environment. Um, I didn't have the, the volume controls and the recording controls turned on on my hardware on the phone. Yeah. So the app itself was all working and everything. We'd already tested it before, but I just didn't have that kind of one switch turned on on the phone, so we didn't capture the audio in the replay. And so, you know, of course, now no one can listen to the recording. It was such a great video. It's terrible. <laughs> um, so I really, you know, I'm kicking myself for that one. But something as simple as that, right. now we know it's never going to happen again. Yep. But, you know, yep. um, definitely test and QA yourself. Yeah. The live. So I mean, a few simple tips, right? If you're going to do this in your business, um, one, try it first, test it first. The thing that Adam did last night was took a fake uh, Twitter profile and just tried doing a live video to basically no audience just to make sure that this time it actually worked. That's something that we should have done the first time. Um, a couple other tips, use your Wi-Fi network instead of your cellular network. Um, sometimes with live video, the longer you go, the harder it can be for the platform to actually deal with the video. So right now we're kind of in a sense of maybe 10 minute videos at max, but we're going to be experimenting with it. We're going to be trying things and, um, and we'll report back with other tips, other advice that you can also be using live video to, to really attain and engage a massive audience of the right people on social media. Right. And use employees to kind of keep you honest too. So I'm slacking with a kind of our head of customer yep. success right now who's watching the video, making sure everything's sounding good, the views coming in. And we used to do this a lot too where we'd have someone just kind of sitting there retweeting us right. while we're doing these videos. Right. right. You know, that kind of stuff just really works and helps uh, you know, 10x your, your videos. But. Yeah. So it's something that we used to do. We saw that it worked. We didn't see the direct attribution because the traffic came in as direct traffic and search traffic, um, but we definitely saw the correlation after three months of not doing live video, how traffic really declined uh, over time. So we're getting back into it. This is kind of our foray back, and we want to make sure that you're learning uh, with us. So what we're going to do here, and this is somewhat meta, is we're doing seven days of Sosito Live all about live video. And what we're going to be doing each day is sharing back with you how many views did we get, how is it working, what tips and advice would we have for you so that within your own marketing departments you can think about how to use live video just like this to get more exposure, capture attention, and engage your audience. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Me too. And follow along. Hashtag Sosito Live. Yeah. We'll be here. All right. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, and uh, thanks for joining us today. It'll be uh, an exciting adventure.